What happens when the Hyundai Santa Fe spends too much time in the dryer? Why you get a Hyundai Venue, of course. The Venue is Hyundai's smallest crossover in its global lineup, and in this video, we get to review it. Let's do this. Hello guys, I'm Reagan and welcome back to another car review. If you're new to my channel, I hope you hit that subscribe button and become part of the Reagan Strides family. If you're my subscriber already, thank you so much for your support by watching this video. I also hope that you give it a like. Also special thanks to Hyundai Manila Bay for this awesome opportunity to feature the all-new Hyundai Venue. If you have any inquiries for any of the Hyundai lineup, you may head on down here to Hyundai Manila Bay and check them out. Or for any inquiries, you may also contact the person in my description below. Hyundai has a penchant for naming their crossovers after exotic locations, so it may seem like they lack a little bit of inspiration when it came to naming the Hyundai Venue. The name itself, however, will be appreciated by the millennial and the Gen Z crowd because the Venue is normally the place where you want to be seen. Or at least that's what Hyundai says. I guess I'm a little bit too old to appreciate that naming reference. Now, locally, we get two variants of the Hyundai Venue in the Philippines, the top-spec GLS and this base variant GL. Now, this base model GL retails for 915,000 Philippine pesos, which puts it squarely at the same price level as a top-spec Kia Stonic. The Stonic, however, is sourced from China, while this Hyundai Venue is proudly made in South Korea. Now, when you look at the Venue, you'll immediately recognize that it's a Hyundai. The Venue now sports this signature cascading front grille here that can be found in the larger Hyundai crossovers. It's definitely a futuristic look, but the Venue's front grille is still quite tame, especially when you compare it to the upcoming Tucson and the current generation Santa Fe. Now, this base model GL gets this blacked out front grille treatment, while the top spec GLS gets the more blingy chrome front grille. When you go over to your headlights, you get these deceiving LED turn signals here that look like they're headlights. The headlights, however, are found underneath those turn signals in the area where your fog light should be, but these headlights are still halogen units, although they get this really cool feature called static bending, which is Hyundai speak for adaptive front headlights. Now, if you're not really sure what adaptive front headlights mean, it just means that while well, your headlight beams will follow where your steering wheel is turning into. Now, to give it an added cool factor, you also have a squarish LED DRLs here that frame your headlight housing. Now, when you look at the entire front fascia of this venue, I must admit, guys, that I am really liking this look. Especially when it comes to this uh, front bumper here that has been given the two-tone treatment. You've got a matte gray finish here at the bottom part. And when you couple it with this black paint job, it gives it that sleek, overall, really slim, European vibe to it. Pretty cool. The Hyundai Venue is based off the Hyundai Accent platform and you can really see it on its side profile. This is truly the smallest crossover in Hyundai's lineup. However, despite its size, it carries itself quite well. The Venue has these bulging front and rear fenders here that gives it a little bit more road presence. This base model GL though doesn't get roof rails, so it's a little bit lower than the top spec GLS. Another major difference between the two variants are the wheels. While the top-spec GLS gets 17 inches, this base model GL has to make do with 15-inch wheels. Now, yes, I must admit that 15-inch wheels on a crossover is a little bit too small. It would have looked better if it went up to at least 16 inches. But anyway, these 15 uh, inches are wrapped in a skinny 18565 R15 tires. The good news though is even the base model GL gets four-wheel disc brakes, so that should aid you with your stopping power. When it comes to suspension, you've got a MacPherson system up front and a torsion beam at the rear end. Now, this venue also has a bit of a low ground clearance, which is at around 170 millimeters, which is really a little bit on the low side for a crossover. So you better think twice before you charge into that flooded street. The rear end design of the Hyundai venue is a mix between the Kia Stonic's rear end and that of a 2010 Porsche Cayenne. It has this blocky Germanic look to it that is truly pleasing to my eye. Now, the venue, however, has an ace up its sleeve, especially when it comes to its taillight design. These taillights are LEDs, but it comes in a unique Z-shaped pattern that will make it truly stand out. 
In a sea of crossovers, these LED taillights of the venue will separate it from the rest. Now, when you pop open the manual lift gate, you'll be treated to 355 liters of trunk capacity, which is practically similar to the other larger subcompact crossovers out in the market. As such, it can easily accommodate my medium-sized luggage. As you can see, the venue can easily swallow my medium-sized luggage and you still have room to spare to the sides for smaller items. Now, if 355 liters is not enough for you, you could tumble down the seat backs of the second row and that will give you 903 liters of trunk capacity, which is perfectly decent for a small crossover. The Korea Source venue may be a small crossover, but it packs a big engine. At least for its class. What we have here is a 1.6 liter petrol engine that churns out 121 horses and 153 Newton meters of torque. Now, power is sent to the front wheels via a six speed automatic transmission. Now, while this engine and transmission may be more than decent for a small crossover, the venue has a bit of a heavy curb weight at over 1,200 kilos. Now, while I'd love to take this out for a test drive and a driving impression, it will have to wait until there's an available venue for such a test drive. Since the Hyundai venue is the smallest and most affordable crossover in Hyundai's lineup, the company focused more on the functions and the functionality when it came to furnishing the venue's cabin. The seats are wrapped in fabric, although to its credit, the seats are quite comfortable and they also look pretty good. Now for the base model GL variant, you only get a urethane steering wheel here. You'll have to go up to the top spec GLS if you want to have a leather wrapped steering wheel. The wheel though has uh, hands-free buttons here, which is also a good touch. And another good news for taller drivers, the steering wheel for the base model GL and even the top six GLS adjusts for tilting and telescoping features. So that is actually pretty good for taller drivers. Now the base model GL also has a regular standard key, while the top spec GLS gets the keyless entry and engine push start button. Not really a big issue though, guys. When you look at the instrument gauges of your venue, you have an analog system here, but you do have some nice aluminum accents there that makes it look like it's the face of a mechanical watch. You also have a multi-information display in the middle for your vital stats. Now, when you move over to your infotainment system, it's good here that Hyundai focus on giving us a decent infotainment system because, well, the venue is being marketed to Gen Z and millennial buyers. We have an 8-inch touchscreen display play here that has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and Bluetooth connectivity. Now the thing is, I'm a little bit uh, put off by how this uh, screen has been mounted on the dashboard. You see, my OCD nature is kind of being triggered by this one inch protrusion that happened at the top part of your infotainment system. It would have looked better though had this been integrated well with a nice sloping dashboard here up top, but well, that's just me. To its credit though, guys, this system looks really good. It has a nice sharp resolution, and you also have a reverse camera with an image that's shown here in your infotainment system. So that's also another piece of good news that despite being a small crossover, this Hyundai venue comes with a rear view camera. Another piece of good news here is that you also have actual physical knobs and buttons here at the bottom part for your most important functions of your infotainment system. So that should help you when it comes to tinkering around with your system while you're on the go. Moving from there, you have your climate control system here. This is a single zone automatic climate control system. And I like how they designed this because it has a nice playful vibe to it. You also have a couple of USB ports, a 12 volt charging outlet, and a small cubby right there. Now, Hyundai threw in some drive modes also because the, even this base model GL has a drive mode selector that can select between eco, normal, and sport mode. So it's really nice to know that you have an in-between mode, which is the normal mode. So that should help when it comes to your driving, uh, well, driving duties. Now, Hyundai also threw in a traction control mode where you can adjust the traction control settings for snow, mud, and sand. However, I don't even know if you're going to take the Hyundai venue to a sandy or muddy terrain. And if you're that type of person, well, best of luck to you, man. <laughs> Below your drive mode selector, you'll have a couple of cup holders here, which we will subject to our clean canteen test. So we'll see how it fits in the clean canteen. Yes, the cup holder closest to the drive mode selector is a fail. It doesn't really uh, fit my clean canteen flask, but the one behind it 
is a pass. So that's a good thing here. You have a couple of different size cup holders, a little bit of a thoughtful touch from Hyundai because, well, yeah, that way if you have two different size drinks, then you will know which cup holder would belong to who. You also have a standard handbrake here and you also have a nice center armrest that's leather wrap here for additional comfort. Now, when you look at the entire cabin materials that's been used in the Hyundai venue, you'll see that it is still the Econo crossover in Hyundai's lineup. You've got a sea of plastics here on your door panels, on your dashboards, which is pretty much expected, especially for a crossover at the below 1 million Philippine peso mark. This is purely function, but at least you still have a very nice infotainment system. The Hyundai Venue's back seat is understandably smaller because, well, it is still a small crossover. However, I'm quite surprised to see that this back seat is a little bit cramped versus the Kia Stonic's back seat. So that's a bit of a mild surprise for me. Now, I'm 5'6", guys, and as you could see, I got around 5 inches of knee room left and around 5 inches of headroom as well before, well, my head touches the headliner. So yeah, um, despite being cousins with the Kia Stonic, the Hyundai Venue's back seat is a little bit more on the cramped side. Maybe it has something to do with the overall body design of this small crossover. Now, when it comes to your toys, you don't really get any toys at all at the back seat of the Venue. Not that you should expect it at this sub 1 million Philippine peso mark. You do get ISO fix anchors if that would mean something to you. The Hyundai Venue GL is a great alternative to other mainstream subcompact sedans and hatchbacks, especially for people who are looking for more space, power, and tech in their daily drivers. The fact that it has stunning good looks for well below 1 million Philippine pesos is an added bonus that would complement your active lifestyle. But how does it compare to its similarly sized cousin, the Kia Stonic? Well, that's a story for another video. Thanks for watching.